Okay, I took the walk back over today. This is the front of the house, but I think I have to enter from the side. But it's pretty beautiful, isn't it? Look at the door knocker. Wow. Okay. Oh, they're the old lights with the, um, like, you know, gasoline lights. That's cool. They still have them. And they're working. They're on right now. I love, love, love the shutters. Okay, so let's try to enter from the side and we'll see if this works. I love all these wild roses. Okay. I don't know if I'm entering properly, but I'll figure it out. Maybe not. No, these doors are definitely closed. I just, I have to come around. Look how beautiful that is. Who doesn't want an entranceway like that? Beautiful little garden here. I'm having a guided tour at one o'clock to get the history. And um, this month they're honoring one of the Underground Railway slaves as this, if, if it was her home and they're gonna honor it that way. So pretty cool they're doing that. I think that's beautiful. So uh, the gentleman I was just speaking to told me he'd be with me in about 10 minutes. So they're just waiting for, to take a tour and um, I'll let him speak instead of me. So um, I'll download this information because it's, it's too small a print to read from here. But this was the Baldwins right here and that's who owned the house and all this land and then they sold it off. And this is Robert Baldwin here and William Baldwin. Okay, the Baldwins owned it first in 1775 and then the Austins took over. Okay, these floors are pretty rickety, but remember they were built in the 1800s. So um, we're, they're doing a tribute to one of the servants that was from the Underground Railway and she was the laundry lady. Okay, this portrait we're seeing is Mrs. Pipkin. Uh, has been redone by a gentleman here in Toronto, but they did find a portrait of her. She escaped from the Underground Railway in the United States, from the United States, and left her four children and her husband to escape. And she became the laundry lady at this manor. To be honest, I didn't know they had exhibits like this over here, but this is pretty amazing. So this artist is a Toronto-based artist, um, an African gentleman or a black gentleman. And I'm looking at all this stuff around the room and I apologize, but that's what I'm here for. This would have been her bedroom, I guess. The maid's quarters. So if we all have a chance to take a look at the third floor, we'll meet back on the landing by the stairs. Okay. But take your time. Ooh, one or two more minutes. Okay. I can't get all the house, but I'll get what I can. Look at the wallpaper. Big Omar. So 
was bankers that first owned it, the Toronto Dominion, which is now TD. A little washstand. And their uniforms. Okay. I have to follow suit here with everybody, so I'm gonna go meet up with everybody, but I'll show you as much as I can. I just like these little closets tucked in here. I guess that would have been a linen closet. But one specific piece, but then after that, same as this floor, I'll give you time to explore. The skylight. Look at the wood railing. So I believe all these rooms are closed off, right? Yeah, that's, we've had to move a lot of art and objects. And I respect that. Absolutely. How many bedrooms? Uh, bedrooms. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine bedrooms. Okay. About 55 rooms in total. It must have had a lot of wealth back in those days, huh? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so thinking about how uh, someone like Mrs. Pipkin could accumulate wealth, um, because the only way you could do it at that time was being a part of the banks or some sort of industry. That's Okay. <laughs> There's some kind of noise in here. Isn't that different? So these are some of the rooms upstairs here. A cross breeze, I guess. This would have been a, a room as well. Bathroom. Look at the windows. This bathroom looked out into the garden. Look at the glass. Wow. Go to the greenhouse. explained to me they're pretty significant to the themes of the show so I like to think of it as being representative of this idea of expanding historic artifacts to incorporate more things one way that we can think of the red line is in terms of bloodlines and especially for those of African descent bloodlines have been disrupted through migration and the transferring of people from Africa into the Americas through the slave trade. If you don't know what redlining is, redlining is a practice where um, banking institutions would look at populations of the city and create green zones and red zones. And anybody in the red zone would not be uh, qualified for... Mm -hmm. Primarily, this was black communities. Right? Giving someone else credit, right? And these pictures are turned around, obviously, because it's not credit to them right now. So they're portraying that it's the servant the maid's home instead of the banker's home. So they're giving credit to her. This is just an exhibit that they're doing. And this would have been her bedroom. And her dressing room. So that's how much wealth was here to have a dressing room back in those days. The size of this.
beautiful bed. Okay. I love the floors. It's quite the bathroom for back in those days, eh? So this would have been the real master suite. It's huge. Wow, quite beautiful. I know you would have looked down to the gardens. Okay. an honor to her, her African heritage. And so would that be. I like the transits here. Okay, now this is closed off again. Look at the carpets, beautiful, beautiful colors. There's a few more bedrooms down there. And more bedrooms. And a few more bedrooms. So. A patio out to the front garden. In a sitting room. So we can head downstairs. Mm -hmm. There's a staircase to the foyer. And then the back staircase. This leads to the back garden. Look at this coat rack. An umbrella stand. And again, the floors. I don't know what this room is. Oh, it's a bathroom. Old fashioned kind. He's leading me into the kitchen. He said he wants me to see this. Go into the kitchen. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is amazing. So, uh, I can appreciate one, this. One of the artists we have uh, involved with the exhibit is uh, Chef Roger. Okay. Afro-Caribbean cook. Yep. So the recipes on the wall are his recipes. And so he's inviting people to take a picture. No, you are. Amazing. Good see, I love history, right? Look at the sink back here in the little... Oh, it's just amazing what they the, used to... The historic ice box at the back, too. So through that door... Get out of here. Where they used to bring the ice to them daily. Oh, yeah, it's massive. Look at that. Oh, it is massive. But this is a massive home. Yes. And then this would be the pantry. I even noticed they had linen closets. They had linen closets upstairs, which I was very surprised. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. this is the portrait of um, the, that's, of the historic portrait of Mrs. Pipkin. Oh, so that's her. It's herself. Yeah, that's, this is what inspired the entire exhibit. Who came yeah. up with this? Uh, Gordon in consultation with, with the city. Wow. Look at this. This pantry's amazing. So this would have been what they worked with and their tools. And the wood stove. And this is another pantry. 
and I have these bowls. I'm missing actually this one. <laughs> but I have two of them anyways. I've been trying to get the third one. Look how short the sinks are. But beautifully done, right? Look at that, they even had a, a, a watering cap back here. Oh, it's beautiful. And I guess this butler's pantry onto a serving pantry, I would imagine. Look at the oil light. Absolutely beautiful. And the silver and crystal. The old toaster. And this is the billiard room. Which they're honoring basketball this week. Or this month, I guess. And look at the art up there. I really don't know what each room's for. Looks like a study, maybe. Well, this artist is amazing. He really, truly is. He can draw. So he's read a Brampton living in Toronto. And a telephone room. Look at that, back in the day. The dining room. Look at the molding. Like they couldn't even do that nowadays. Those clothes pegs. These are the actual pegs. They are ceramic that they used to do the laundry with back in the 1800s. The, uh, a lot of the artifacts in the Austin home would have uh, very essentializing representations of location and people. Uh, and for this exhibit, obviously, we've removed a lot of them. Uh, but one remains, and that's this one here, actually. Individual with the camel. Mm. But mm. If, if we were doing the regular. So that's out of Egypt then? Uh, somewhere in uh, Northern Africa or, um, or the Middle East. Who so was behind the railroad when you were. People would get into contact with someone in the States first in order to find their way into Canada, usually. And until when was it active? Uh, until after the, the American Civil War, which was, I think, 1866, 1865. Wow. So if you've had a chance to check out the rest of the main floor, if you haven't got to worry, I'm going to make this quick. Inside the library. Here's the, lo here's the foyer. It's just grand. And then we have in here, they have the raptors. They're representing um, black history. So 
sorry for the noise of the fan. They definitely didn't have air conditioning back then. Wow. So this would have been like a sitting sunroom. Boy, I'd love to live in this house. Beautiful. And that goes on to the front garden that I was talking about. I think there should be a maze out there. But no one's done that, but I think that. Okay, the piano. This gentleman can really draw. His art's amazing. And then a sitting room in here. Wow. Look at like red velvet. No, it's red silk wallpaper. Unfortunately, there were many, and for Mrs. Pipkin, she had four kids that uh, were not able to, to come with her when she escaped enslavement. <coughs> they remained in the United States for the rest of her life, um, so she was never reunited to them. But that doesn't mean that they didn't stop fighting. Uh, her husband actually wrote this letter to black abolitionists in the United States, trying to see if there was any way that they could be reunited. Did he live here with her? Um, on the census, on one of the censuses in Canada, this was listed as her home address, but not his. Um, and that's because if you were a servant in, in those times, you weren't allowed to be married or, uh, or have came to the Americas by choice of people of African descent. They think Oprah came uh, over on the transatlantic slave trade, but because Africans had brought them with them. Uh, so I really like the way that this portion, or this picture is interacting with the red line, crossing over that red line to plant the seeds. It reminds me of that uh, kind of maybe cliche story of you don't plant oak trees because you plan to sit in the shade. It's because you plan your kids to sit in the city. Here's that you that you can purchase. Oh, you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I plan that we have uh, like smaller versions. The Mrs. Pipkin portrait. We have larger ones that are uh, signed by Gordon, um, and then we have smaller ones that it, that you can collect like trading cards. So. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Thank you so much for your time today. Oh my. Pleasure. I might come back in again so I can do this again. I don't live far. Each, uh, each tour guide kind of gives them. Okay, the tour was very well done. Hard to videotape everything, but thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, worth even coming back to. So what they have done is Mrs. Pipkin and the artist had painted pictures of her modernized her being in the position where she would have been wealthy and owned the manor. So that was what the exhibit was about today. So this is the front of the house facing downtown Toronto. 
And I just wanted to show you something. And we call it Spadina. And back in the day, they said Spadina because it was an Indian word uh, that meant top of the hill. So there you go. That's where I think they're having a function, but that's where I think they should do the maze. Wouldn't that be beautiful? I am gonna close because I am leaving now. And I've spent my last two days over in this house. <laughs> if it wasn't for the gardens, it was for the, for the tour of the house. Um, there was only four or five of us on tour, which wasn't many at all. But the gentleman that was taking us on the tour was very lovely. Okay. See y'all next time. Hope you enjoyed. I did. You know I have a thing for this greenhouse. It's my favorite thing to the whole property. But I'm glad I came over here. All this time and I've never walked and done this. So it was special. I'll do it again. They have different exhibits, so it'll be fun. Because I walked here, I didn't bring a wallet with any real money in it, but I bought a couple postcards because my daughter and I send postcards to each other. So the whole exhibit was behind a lady named Mrs. Pipkin that came through the Underground Railway. And the, the family here hired her to be the laundry lady and they paid her, she wasn't a slave, um, but she left her four children and her husband in America. And we pleaded with the family for them to bring them across and nobody knows if it ever really happened or if her children ever got here. And these red lines you see on the pictures are bloodlines. That's pretty neat. This one has a cross bloodline on her. But I bought these postcards. I would have liked to have bought Mrs. Pipkin's uh, portrait, which was unheard of to have uh, pictures of someone who worked for you like that. But the lady, the manor, lady of the manor was um, an artist. So she painted her. So that, was, that was found in history, which is pretty neat to find. And that was from the 1800s, early 1800s. So, here's the second picture, sorry. I'm on the street. They're quite beautiful. There you go. He sells his art, but it's for thousands of dollars. Okay, I'm back to where I started yesterday, and I'm gonna walk home now, so I'll talk to you later. The exhibit today was done by Gordon Shadrach, I believe his name is. No, I was in the garden yesterday and I asked if I could go for a tour of the house and they said at one o'clock I could. Anyways, long story short, I did not know there was an exhibit on this. It was a very well done exhibit. The art is absolutely stunning. The gentleman is a true um, amazing Canadian artist. With this said, uh, the biggest thing I got out of this was the red line. It, man it means two things, the broken blood line because of slavery. And secondly, um, the red line is because back in the day, there was red zones and green zones uh, for in order to be able to buy property. That's something I really didn't know much about. I kind of heard something about it years ago, but the gentleman that owned the house was a banker and uh, they didn't permit people to buy in certain neighborhoods. So, And anyways, I just thought I'd give you a little bit of history that I learned in there. I was trying to... Uh, get pictures of the home but it was really hard because a lot of the rooms were closed off and that kind of stuff the picture of the apple here is there's an orchard on the property and Gordon was sitting there all the time and he said he just decided to paint that picture and the canary is freedom so and the Toronto Raptors sponsored this this is the artist Gordon he sat in the room upstairs painting these paintings for almost a year I am closing. Talk to y'all later.